You're back in Singapore. Rich Franklin's one warrior series, Punya Sai, taking on Shafkat. Punya Sai on the left of your screen. Watch your cool off. Let's out a yell before they mix it up. Ready? Living in Indonesia Go. these days, comes from a wrestling background. Swift touch of gloves at the start. So feeding each other out in these opening seconds, getting used to the movement and their environment. Sai is undefeated in his mixed martial arts career. He was found by one Warrior Series, and that's where he spent his time. He's 2-0 in the organization, and he's looked sharp since his debut. Nothing has landed yet, 34 seconds gone. Haji Kulov has a, his, his right hand like almost glued there to that side. He, he must have tremendous respect for the striking ability of Sai. Uh, he doesn't want to take any chances of something sneaking in over there. He's very defensive in that, that right side of his body. Just waiting for the big bomb to land. We're almost a minute in here, and these two still really feeling each other out. Lots of movement. It's Sai who's pursuing with the economy of effort. Lots of movement from Hoja Kulov. Guys, I can feel those kicks from here. <laughs> those are solid. You know they're solid when you don't hear a lot of a slapping sound. It's kind of more of that deep kind of meat smacking sound it's just uh those are the ones that hurt yeah just a thud that just reverberates through the entire ring good footwork shown by Sai. Sai's training out there at bali mma now right working on hey, bjj but he's a good striker he's got a good fluid movement hajakulov comes from a wrestling background but he's choosing to stand and strike with Sai, which is kind of surprising i'm surprised hajakulov hasn't even shot a takedown yet how distracting is it to take someone who, who moves to the extent that Sai is? I mean, just constantly moving, isn't he? It's definitely hard to get a beat on. And someone coming from a wrestling background, I can speak to this myself. You see the overhand right of Hajikulov. That's something that typically tends to work for people who want to close distance quickly with a strike and utilize the wrestling. When you have someone like Sai, who, who has those small movements but, but never really standing still, it's very difficult to get the timing in of when you should shoot, when you should strike. And you're always want, worried about getting hit in the face. Especially when he's changing stances like this. Because when he goes southpaw, you know, you can pick up a single leg. When he's orthodox, you can pick up the double leg. You always got to be changing your strategy in your head for what stance he's giving you. In that orthodox position, he's got very high hands, both hands up above the chin there for most of the time. He's got that economy of movement, hasn't he? He certainly is moving. He's not static, but he's cutting, cutting the ring off. And finally, they get to grips with each other. Hodja Kulov with the throat inside those, that right arm. Roger Kulov has that headlock so takedown. Pop here, then he's going to be in the advantageous position. Let's see what Roger Kulov can do, spin arounds. So he's got to keep moving. He can't allow that leg to get trapped and allow... That's it, he's got to switch his hips around, Mitch, as you're saying, to the back there. Stay behind Roger Kulov, essentially. Do not allow Roger Kulov to face him. A good scrambling from Hajakulov to end up on top. Side was very close to securing the back, but Hajakulov just kept going. Oh, he still doesn't have control yet, though. He's got to get that arm across in order to get control. Side's got good scrambling. What athletic What's ability by both of these gentlemen. Good job by Side to get back up to his feet. But Hajikulov puts him right back down. And as Hajikulov's uh, short sort of rode up there for a second, you saw some welts this on his thighs taking some kicks. Team. You guys, this is a pretty, because look at that angle there. This is what I'm talking about. See how the foot is underneath and across? It's allowing Sai to constantly keep the correct angle and to keep Hajikulov's head buried. Sai does train with a lot of BJJ black belts out there at Bali MMA. So he's got a lot of good groundwork. He works with the Super Brothers. He works with Muhammad Ayman. He's got a lot of crafty athletes to train with out there at Bali MMA. But there might be a mark there around Hajikulov's forehead. He keeps going after that guillotine. Hajikulov might take him for a ride here once he gets both hands locked. Oh, big one. Good prediction, Mitch. 
<laughs> yeah, once those wrestlers get those hands locked, you know all about this. It's hard to stop that takedown once they lock those hands. You're absolutely right. But I will say all of this offensive wrestling by Hajikulov is absolutely exhausting. It is much more tiring to be offensive and picking someone up and throwing them down, and then they just get back up, and you pick them up, and you throw them down, and you expend a lot of energy. So... That was right about that mark, Misha. That, that yeah. eye could be in some trouble, Hajikulov. Oh. Perhaps get a, a good chance for the corner man to take a look at that. It looks a little bit messy. Now let's take a look at that big ride you were talking about, Mitch. We'll get a couple of looks at them. Beautiful. Double leg for the slam. Ends up in side control, but immediately side pivots to his side, starts scooting out, hip escapes out, and gets right back into guard. Yep, as soon as those hands are locked, he's lifting and he's rotating for a big slam down to the ground. Establishing that good top position, but when you're on the receiving end of a takedown like that, I saw his arm go down trying to break the fall, but you're at risk perhaps of breaking your arm, aren't you? That's true. You have to be ready to collapse your arm. You, you can't expect it to be the stopping point. You know, it's just kind of meant to be there as a spring, if you will. So you've got to be careful not to lock your elbow out, or chances are you'll hyperextend it. Tough times. Second round coming up. Back, back, back to your point. Did get a, a little bit of a look at Hachikulov's face. There Ready? might be Go! a little mark underneath the eye. It's certainly been cleaned up. He's got a little mouse right there under his left eye, and uh, he's, he's wearing it well. Got a little bit of damage, but I don't think anything's going to flow into his eye. I think he's all right. He does have to keep that guard nice and high, though. Time to pull his shorts up. Can you notice the breathing difference, though, even after that minute break between Hajikulov and Sai? You know, Sai is still very relaxed. As I mentioned, it's much less effort and exertion physically to defend the takedown than it is to be offensive in it. So now I would suspect that, that Sai might be able to get a little bit more of his striking off in this round, being the fresher fighter, f excuse me, the fresher athlete coming out this round. Gotta keep in mind too, Misha, that Sai is only 20 years old. So this guy has a lot of time to develop into the complete mixed martial artist when he can be. Here goes Hajikula, maintaining Sai control, but a great job by Sai to get back into control. to say I'm so impressed with Sai because I know that Hachikulov comes from a wrestling background and you know he is getting the better of these for the most part but here he finds himself on bottom you know and that's the the, the Sai is just not willing to give up the scramble and I love that kind of tenacity Good job right there in the Bali MMA corner you can see Sai works his way back up to his feet pushing the head down all the fundamentals are there nice heavy sprawl let's see if Hachikulov locks the hands there's another takedown, not quite as heavy as the one we saw in the first round. Solid elbow just to the shoulder blade there. Not much that's legal to aim at in that particular position. Again, that takedown could be kind of related to the energy expenditure that Misha was bringing up. He's not trying to expend a lot more technical on the takedown rather than impressive with that big slam. But he is working his way possibly into mount. But good butterfly hooks from side just to kind of keep control of the position to make sure that Hajikulov doesn't advance too much. You see, the right left leg is able to control it, maintain it, keeps that foot inside. Sai is not making this easy, easy on Hajikulov to keep his balance, to keep pressure in order to do any ground and pound. He's sort of making himself into like a yoga ball or bosu ball for a better term. And he's kind of making it where, imagine if you were trying to hang on to one of those balls and just keep your balance on that. It's really difficult to do so. So really kudos to Sai for being such a mobile athlete. I just picture myself just bouncing off those balls and not being able to hold on to it. Great well, analogy. That's what it, you see it here. I mean, it, really, look at the hips of uh, Hajikulov. It's, he's not able to settle them. It really would be just like that for, for some people who haven't been in these grappling positions. It is like trying to flatten out one of those uh, Bosu balls, for a lack of better analogy. Final couple of minutes of this second round. See, it all comes down to damage inflicted. You know, just because size on the bottom does not necessarily mean he's losing. Hajikulov is doing a good job of controlling the position, but size also throwing a lot of strikes from the bottom. And now 
now it's starting to wear on Sai. You can see Sai's not as explosive. You know, good little hip escape there. He's right there in his corner. You can listen to, you can see Gianni Suba just kind of mouthing some words of advice. He's got to get that underhook on that right side. If he can get the underhook, he can utilize that hip escape a little bit better and create a little bit more of a scramble. But Hajikulov's flattening him out, and when you get flattened out, it's hard to escape. And then you can expect the ground and pound to follow up here as Hajikulov kind of regroups and, and gets his breath back from all that explosive wrestling that he just did. You could imagine that some pretty heavy ground and pound is, is preparing to ensue. It's all about that underhook, right? Whoever has that underhook is able to control the body. For those elbows, they're small, but they're doing damage. They're pressing rather than... <laughs> Yeah, they don't have to be very big, though. Yeah. They really don't need. You need maybe, you know, an inch or two. Oh, look at Sai getting back up to his feet. Good work. Great strength as well. I just was getting the feeling that he was fatiguing a little bit, but that was good strength. Now Sai needs to push the face and head away, create some space. There we go. Nicely done. A little bit of a breather. Only 20 seconds left now of this round. Oh, big game maker from Hodjakulov. It was way off the mark in the end. But it's something to keep in note. He's sending a message to Sai. Hey, I'm not out of this. All sorts of marks on Sai. You can look to his ear and uh, just around the left eye. And it's not surprising. We talked about those short little elbows that we saw inside, Misha. We'll take a look at one of these takedowns here. We have uh, Hajikulov was going for head and arm, which was actually countered before he even had really just taking the uh, the head over the feet for a big big double leg takedown. So yeah, I was right. There is there is damage to the ear there. You can see some Vaseline being applied. Ears take a battering in this sport, Mitch, don't they? Hey man, that's just souvenirs. You get to wear well. You know you don't mess with the guy with cauliflower ears. Well, you notice that Sai stood the first round, but he is sitting the second round. Maybe a sign of, of a bit of fatigue and also just kind of mentally being worn on that he's getting taken down, even though he's giving his best effort to maintain position and not get taken down. I think you make a bit of a rod for your back when you stand after the first round, because <laughs> then, as you say, you kind of give things away when you choose to take a seat. Final round. Hodjikulov furthest away from the camera. Sai closest to you. And there's another to Sai with the big takedown. Rocking in, using that head and shoulder movement. Kind of like uh, Mike Tyson asks as he gets it nice and tight those, to secure his takedown. Those knees. Good work with the left hand. I think one, one knee like that is worth about 10 elbows. Hodjikulov working his way back up to his knees. Sai might be able to get the back one. Pops out the back door. Here comes Hajikulov. He is relentless, isn't he? And he's throwing absolutely everything into those right hands. Yes, whether they land or not, they're, they're serving a purpose. They're serving a purpose to, to be dangerous if they land, but also, most importantly, I think, for the game plan of Hajikulov, obviously, is to close distance, to get inside and get those takedowns. So I can use that wizard on the left side to main, keep the posture up on Hajikulov. So now he's just, now that's it. Now he's able to get back into the 50 50 position, work his way around. Now he's got both underhooks. Final round, so all the important work has to be done now. Approaching the final three and a half minutes. Hachikunov again in that head and arm position, but he has not been successful in getting the takedown first try on those. It's been off of the scramble. He's better off here, as you see, going for that double leg. He's going to lock his hands, pick him up. And a little hole in the ropes there. Let's see if Hajikov can finish. And he does. Horn is getting very agitated. It's as noisy here today now as it's been all day. I think they realize exactly how important these last three minutes are. And Hajikulov's had a lot of top positions, had a lot of aggression shown from the ground and pound. But Sai's been in there delivering a lot of elbows. You can see the marks starting to welt up the eye of Hajikulov. Now he's, I like how Sai separates the legs. He's got that little bit of sprawl, so he's got that little bit of space to prevent Hajikulov from locking the legs, and he's able to defend. Really Sai's 
Go ahead, Misha. I want to see Sai here. Yes, there we go. Unleash some striking. We haven't seen him really utilize that striking ability that he has. You know, he's been very willing to engage in the wrestling. And, you know, for what it's worth, he's been doing a good job, but he hasn't been winning them. Hajikulov has been very dominant. That economy of effort that we spoke about in Sai's general movement translates to his punches as well. He's good with the little short punches. We saw one there as they came out of the clinch. A little right hand straight on the button. Looks like Taj Kulov starting to get a little bit sloppy in these final two minutes. You can see him start to get a little bit wild in the exchanges. Desperately trying to look for that takedown. Hodjakulov breathing quite heavily. Who can blame him? Last two minutes of this round now. It could all ride on this. But you're looking for something a little bit special from Sai, aren't you, Misha, at this stage? I definitely am. I think that Sion is behind on the scorecards at this point, and that, that, that he needs to he needs to get away. He needs to to use his striking to really make a statement and 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 not try to fight the game of Hajikulov head on. You know, he needs to be more of a technician in this. That was his opportunity right there to throw one down the middle, and he chose to back away and said, you know. He's got to be more aggressive in this last minute and a half if he wants to send a statement to the judges. Somebody's got to pull the trigger here. They're both just kind of waiting. They don't I don't think they realize how close the scorecards are at this point. I think oh, Haji is Hail Marys. I think Haji Kulak is exhausted, but I think that Sai is afraid that if he throws something, he's going to get taken down. He has expended a great deal of effort, Haji Kulak, in this contest. Sai may well have the more energy in this final minute. Go! He's, he's got to go. Somebody's got to make something happen here. And the referee is going to stand them up. 45 seconds now for Sai to try and change things around if indeed Hodjakulov has the advantage. You hear the Bali MMA corner screaming for Sai to go forward. Both of these guys feeling the effort now. They're tiring. They've not got much left. Is Hodjakulov going to send in another one of those big Hail Marys? Is Sai going to do the damage that he probably needs? He did land a good left hand there. It's flush on the jaw. Hodjakulov goes for the last minute guillotine. He might just be hanging on, waiting for time to elapse. He's trying to finish. He's not in a good position to finish, but I mean, Hodjakulov is really trying to finish. Sai slips out. Too little, too late. Good effort from these two, wasn't it? Applause in this arena. We saw plenty of action from the corner, and they were all very, very involved in this one. And it is, I think, quite fittingly, going to go down to the judges' scorecards. Mitch, do you agree with Misha that it's probably gone to Hodjakulov? I think it just comes down to the takedowns, the top control, a little bit of the ground and pound, but Sai was doing a good job of answering back with a lot of elbows off from the bottom position, but it was just a too little, too late in the top exchanges, and I think the nod might be going to Hajakulov, but you never know when you put it in the judges' hands. He did expend an awful lot of energy early on just in his just in his movement but then once they got to grips with each other he was relentless i must say either way i think sai is going to learn a lot from this match you know he's you know representing the myanmar flag right there his people are probably cheering him on just like they do on lan song misha who do you have it for i definitely think it's going to go to haji kulov um you know but i think like you said Sai's going to learn a lot from this he has two fights so he, he definitely has room to, to gain experience. And Winner, home. red corner. Well, there you are. Sting. Rich Franklin's One Warrior Series. Next up for you, Ragvendra Singh against Punk Judge round by round. Important to consider that if you're judging this one at home. Don't award one round to one athlete. Look at the whole 15 minutes to decide who your winner is. Punya Sai from Bali MMA, grew up in New Zealand. Very proud, though, of his Burmese heritage from Myanmar and is predominantly a striker. Yeah, yeah. All right, no bad head, no spine. When I, when I say stop, you stop, okay? Protect yourself at all times. Touch glove, back to your corner. Judge! Judge! Punya Sai, the boy from Glen Innes, New ready, Zealand. He's ready, coming up three victories go. here at Rich Franklin's One Warrior Series. He's going to look to add it, make it to the fourth. He's been working on his grappling as well with the coaches at Bali MMA. Got black belt coaches Andrew and Anthony Leone. 
He's got really, really natural striking. He's been striking since he was 14 years old. Under the tutelage of Mike Ikile, who's the current head coach, head striking coach at Bali MMA. So I'm excited for this one. Punya Sai is a very talented kid. He's a teammate of yours, yeah? Punya is actually a teammate of mine. We trained together. He's been at Bali for about a year and a half now. His grappling's very improved, but look at that. Good hips by Good hips by Punya Sai. Exchange these to the body, and it's intensive stuff, isn't it? Did you guys see that right hook? That landed. That definitely stung a little. Yeah, Ragendra Singh is no joke. He's, he's a very natural striker as well. Likes to set up his punches off his kicks. Look for him to throw that inside left kick and then swing wow well with those hooks. Ragendra looks to be naturally slightly bigger than his opponent. Big overhand right. Punya with the double unders. Drags Singh to the mat. He's in side control right now. Needs to pop his head out. Drop. Should be okay here. Drop. So if Singh wants to to put him in danger, he needs to switch his hips to that right side, right? So he's he's in the hole right now, Saez. Uh, now stepping over to mount. He's in a much safer position. Needs to push on the face of Singh to pop his head out. There we see that big ground and pound. Oh, working hard, yeah. Covering up. Singh Very has to cover up because these are coming down quite heavily. Some of them are getting through, landing flush, but there's a lot of arms in the way, and he's trying to control those and at least suppress one of them so that he can use that right hand to land. So, so Singh, yeah, needs to get his feet down on the ground in order to buck. You know, keep having his feet in the air is not going to help him. You see, now he's bucking, he's offsetting the balance of side. If he wants to escape from this, he's got to really buck and then turn to a side, right? He needs to pick a side, push those legs down, and, and get. that's easier said than done, though, when these punches are raining down at the speed that Sai is you dropping these yourself. bombs. He's clearly listening to you, Misha. He's trying, but these punches are relentless. They're really coming in at speed. Plenty of them not so hard at the moment because they're arm punches. He's not throwing them from too far back. He's doing more of an overwhelming attack. I mean, there's two ways that you can look to, to deliver ground and pound. One is just at speed, and you're overwhelming, and it's really difficult to defend because there's no pause. There's no break. And as you see, Sai doesn't know which one of those is going to come through hard because there was an elbow that slipped right through the guard with bad intent. Um, you know, or you could drop those with heavily and pick your shots. I was just about to say, I wonder if the referee will consider repositioning them because the ropes are kind of getting in the way of size offense. And they resume, and there's that bucking again, but he's turned his body around, Misha. Sai looking to give it. And he's tapped out, so he turned his body, and that was the end of it. Punya Sai makes it four in a row here at one Warrior Series. Finishes off Raghendra Singh with the rear naked choke. Off of Barrage strikes in the first round. I've got one happy Gianni Suba next I'm to me. Sorry, I'm sorry, I am very excited. That's okay, buddy. Your teammate is victorious, and Rich Franklin is watching. It only took a moment before the back was turned for the forearm to go in there. Really a spectacular play. I mean, he did it. He did everything very well, and and forced uh, his opponent to give up. You know, Singh to give up his back. He had no choice. Winner. So there's your winner. One Warrior Series moves to...
by the way of knockout in the very first.